common tumors, and I love to see patients with these tumors because um, for surgeons, they're quite challenging, but they often have good outcomes. And as I mentioned in the previous video, most of these are benign. What I would like to do is have my assistant Maria here uh, give me some questions that were asked by people who view the previous videos, and we'll go over those questions and discuss them. If you are interested in having a further consultation for a meningioma here in Seattle, please call our IV Center at 206-320-2300. So, let's go over some questions that were raised from the last uh, viewer comments. Perfect. So, hello to all of you out there on the Meningioma Mamas page and the Meningioma UK page. We've had quite a few questions come in from some of you. And the first question we have is, how often when you watch and wait with meningiomas do you find that they actually don't grow? That's a good question and it's not 100% easy, but let me use a, a, a drawing to show um, what I suspect is pretty much the lifetime of a lot of meningiomas. Um, if this is, uh, let's say this, we're talking about a 25 year old woman because I suspect most meningiomas occur in women because, it, uh, as I mentioned before, they may have a hormonal influence, and usually they're not present in childhood, so they probably start growing sometime in adulthood. So let's say that you're a 25 year old woman at this stage, and you have a meningioma that starts growing that's that big. Well, in some cases, if it grows throughout your life, it can literally get to be that big around. And I have seen meningiomas the size of a grapefruit. Let's say this is a 75 year old female. Now this meningioma may stay this size and then go like that, or it may take on a growth pattern like that. Um, one thing that should be noted is for most women, once they reach menopause, let's say around age 45 or so, the meningioma seems to have a, a less uh, hormonal growth influence. So let's say you have a small tumor that's going like this, it may just sit there from then on for the rest of the person's life. So it's a little bit of a complicated answer in that if you come to me and, and you've been found to have an incidental meningioma and you are 60 years old and it's a small meningioma, I would say most likely that's not gonna be growing anytime soon. However, when I see meningiomas in younger patients, I have a feeling that they're gonna grow and so I'm a little more aggressive. Another factor is when you do a CAT scan or MRI, let's say you do a CAT scan and you see right in the midline on the falx, which is this dura right down the middle of the head, sometimes you'll see a little meningioma like that. Uh, if you do a CAT scan and it's white on the CAT scan, it suggests it's full of bone material. That indicates that it's probably been there for 50 years and it's not growing. So when we see calcified meningiomas in older patients, Really, it's not even anything that raises any issue at all, and you usually can watch those. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Great. So we had another question um, about the difference and kind of the factors involved with symptomatic versus incidental men meningiomas. If you could kind of delve deeper into that about kind of the differences in treatment and risk factors, um, that's one of the other questions we have coming out from our UK meningioma page we watch. Yes, yeah, so I think to answer that I'll use a model. Um, I would say far and away the most common uh, way meningiomas in 2017 are diagnosed are incidentally. And that's because thousands of people, especially in the United States, if they have a headache or small head injury, they will get a CAT scan and an MRI scan often. And so there are thousands of people walking around with small meningiomas that are causing no symptoms. So those are identified and usually we watch those. However, um, meningiomas that present uh, with symptoms can present in a number of ways and it really depends on where they are. There's a whole class of meningiomas that present right here at the base of the brain in an area called, for instance, the tuberculum cella, which is right near the pituitary gland and they grow in a tight spot which is right between these two nerves called the optic nerves. So if a tumor is pea-sized in that location, it can cause pressure on the optic nerves and you can have vision changes. And so you can identify those symptoms very early. So a lot of meningiomas 
occur in this lo location. Some meningiomas grow in the frontal lobes and they can get quite large, but they may also knock out the function of the olfactory nerves, which are these two nerves growing right between the eyes and patients will come in with some frontal lobe symptoms being confused, for instance, um, or having a weird affect and not being able to smell with a lack of sense of smell. A lot of times meningiomas will grow down at the base of the skull on the dura as it lines the base of the skull and these can push into areas next to the brainstem. If a, if a meningioma presses on the brainstem here, some people will have loss of balance because the fibers from the brain going down to their legs will be getting distorted. Um, so there are all kinds of symptoms. Probably the most typical symptoms for patients who have meningiomas that present on the top of the head um, will be if they're in a location, for instance, where this purple band on the brain is, this is called the motor cortex. If a meningioma presses down on this area, that will cause the motor area on the contralateral or the opposite side of the body to be affected. So pressure from a meningioma here may cause right-sided arm or leg weakness. If it causes uh, swelling or irritation of the brain, it can cause a seizure. So meningiomas can cause, can present with weakness on the opposite side of the body, seizure activi activity, loss of sense of smell, loss of visual function. Usually the ones jammed down at the skull base are diagnosed at a smaller size because a small amount of a tumor growth in that area can cause big symptoms. These in the frontal lobes and back in this part of the brain can get pretty large. The ones right in the middle or near the motor cortex can often cause symptoms just by growing a little bit. And sometimes they can cause a lot of swelling depending on the biology of the tumor and that can affect seizure activity as well. Got it. Um, what is your opinion on the wait and watch versus having surgery? So, you know, I tell people when they come and see me with meningiomas, uh, if they're small, you, and especially if they're older, that it makes a lot of sense to consider three options and more weight, in my mind, on the wait and watch option. So let's say someone comes in after having a headache, age 65, with a small meningioma, if I look at it and on the CAT scan it has calcification or bone formation, I'm going to say let's don't mess with this if it's causing no symptoms. However, um, if someone comes in and they're a younger patient, especially it, um, I often see tumors, meningiomas that grow right along this area called the superior sagittal sinus. This is There's a large vein that is incorporated into the dura and sometimes if they grow off of that area they they don't involve the sinus, which is an important vein, but as they get bigger, they may start growing into that vein. So you might want to be um, aggressive and try to get them before they grow into the area. Another thing should be noted that um, sometimes we find tumors that grow deep down near brain structures like the, an area called the cavernous sinus. And those are difficult to remove without causing damage to the, the nerves that move the eyeballs. Um, and for those types of tumors and for some other small tumors that are really less than three centimeters in diameter, so tumors that are about that small or smaller, another option is radiosurgery, which uh, sounds like surgery, but it's, as I mentioned in the previous video, radiosurgery is, is a type of radiation where multiple beams of radiation all go into one focused area and have very little radiation to the surrounding area. And stereotactic radiation or radiosurgery uh, with a gamma knife or a cyber knife or a LINAC based uh, machine, they all can pretty much do the same thing and uh, stop the growth of most of these meningiomas. Okay.